Hello, Auggies Worldwide. My name is Dave Kassler. I'm amateur radio call sign KE0OG here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Joel Butson, KE0RHY. I know Joel. He lives just up the road in Delta. Great guy. And uh, he is asking questions about the three variables in a solar power supply. You've got a load, you've got storage, and you've got the energy supply from the solar panels themselves. And the question is, how do you balance that? And he says, um, I have three 250-watt rated solar panels, which is nice. It's a lot and think there ought to be some sort of general guideline for an optimal number of storage batteries for that many panels. I've asked this of other people and they tell me, or they all ask me, what load do I plan to put on batteries? Yes, 750 watts can only do so much. Actually, it can do a lot. Um, it seems like the more batteries I have, the more stuff I could power. But putting 100 batteries with these three panels would take forever to charge if they even would charge that many. Yes, they would. Conversely, using only one battery would be similarly ridiculous. Not necessarily. My question, do you have a general guideline relating to the number of batteries that could reasonably be charged by a set of solar panels? Well, I hate to say this, Joel, but the guy who asked, what are you going to power with this, is asking the right question. So you've got three variables. The rate at which you can charge batteries. The rate at which you can discharge the batteries and for how long. And the third is the... Uh, and the third is how much extra energy do you want stored in the system for cloudy days. Okay. So these three factors, you've got energy coming in, you've got energy going out, and energy being stored. So let's take a look at this on the whiteboard. Okay, you've got solar panels here. And you may have several. And they come down through charge controller, which may, if these are 24-volt panels, that convert it to 12, and you've got some batteries here okay and then you've got a load which could be like a radio lights uh, some motors you know like if you're going to do some drilling or something like that so and and to do that you would have to have an inverter Okay, so this is your source. This is your load. And this is your storage. Now, I'm going to throw some numbers around here that depend wildly on where you are in the world. Okay. The usual value for storage is one week. Okay, we're going to start right there. One week of being able to supply these loads without any sun at all. The idea being that some point in that week you're going to get enough source power to recharge the battery before you run it dry. So you look at this, let's say this is 100 amp hours. Okay, at uh, whatever voltage you're going to take and so on, usually the output of this is either 12 or 24 volts. Okay, then you have a load over here and you start adding these things up into watt hours per week. Okay, I realize that's a funny unit because this is time and this is time and they will cancel, but you're looking for watts. But anyway, it gives you a number of the watt hours in a week that you want this to handle. And so you translate this in one week directly back 
to the size of the storage. This is how long do you want this load to be powered from this battery without any input from the panels. Okay? Now, so this is highly variable depending. If you're powering your radio all the time, you want a big enough battery that it will power that. Usually we power uh, some lights. Now I'm going to let my assistant pick up his camera and take a look at a couple things. If you see that little goo over there that's on all the time, that is powered by the solar system. It takes hardly any power. Okay? This thing right... Um, where did I put it? Of course, the, the radio is powered by solar. The light in the meter is powered by solar. I'm disconnected this for right now. This clock right here is powered by the solar, as is this, which is the actual GPS unit. This little light right here is always on, powered by the solar. And up on top, I've got an old defunct aviation instrument that's powered by solar to keep the lights on. And this similar uh, weird uh, Harry Potter cup is powered by solar. Okay, now if we look over here, that very bright light up there is powered by solar. Okay, so I've got a bunch of stuff powered by solar, most of it taking hardly any energy. And then what I have right here, to kind of keep track, this right here tells me the battery voltage. This right here tells me the charging current. Now this is a lithium ion battery. Okay, so it's still charging. We have 29.3 volts on the solar cells. These are the 24 volt solar cells. 3.31 amps is coming through. And that goes through this thing right here, which is a maximum power point tracker. Okay, so lots and lots of things in here are powered by the solar. None of them very big. Okay, so coming back to this. Now, how big do we want these panels to be. Okay, here's now where we do averages. What we do right here is we look at, okay, we've got the bit for a week down here. Now we have to understand that this load's worth of energy stored in the battery needs to be replenished by the solar panels depending in how much sunshine you get. If you're here in Colorado, you get a lot of sunshine. If you're in New England or parts of Europe, you get very little sunshine. So how long does it take for this to average out to being greater than your load? Okay, this has to be big enough to power the load for a week. That's a starting point. If you got lots of cloudy weather, you'll want that to be longer. And then the source has to average out enough to put enough energy into this to actually run this entire load for the week. Okay, so if you only have sunshine half the time, then that means that this needs to be two times the size of this load down here. Okay, so you can charge your batteries and keep this thing uh, loaded here. Usually we tend to err a little bit on the big side on the solar panels. They're actually not that expensive. Um, batteries are more expensive than the solar panels. Okay. Um, I would go with the lithium ion. You can get a very nice charge controller like mine. Um, and he doesn't. It's maximum PowerPoint uh, controller. Okay. So I think that kind of answers the thing. Start with the load. Decide how long you want to be able to power that load without worrying. Make the battery that big. Then make the solar panels big enough so that 
with the sun that you actually have, remembering it that in like December and so on, you've got the least amount of sun, this will always keep ahead of the discharging from the load. And there you have it. So, yes, there is a relationship between these. Now, when I first started in solar, I had a little panel, a battery, and my radio was what I was powering with it. What I discovered very quickly and confirmed by running some numbers is that um, I was way ahead of the power curve, so to speak. I could run my radio indefinitely and not discharge the battery because the solar panel, which was only 30 watts, was dump pumping power into that all the time, even though it was a 100 watt radio and drew 21 amps or so out of the battery on voice peaks. So it's amazing what you can do with solar. Now I'm going to show you something. This is the April 1996 issue of QST. This is one of the first articles I wrote for the magazine. Let's see if we can find it. It's called Solar Power for Your Ham Station. It's easier than you think. Okay. This article, which goes on for several pages, talks about everything I've just talked about, but in much more detail. If you have access, if you're an ARRL member, you have access to this. It is, again, the April 1996 QST, and look for the article by Kassler. Interestingly, this article was picked up by another associated amateur radio league around the world, in this case, the Greek. Um, and so we have, um, it's all Greek to me, about the uh, solar panel. And they took uh, this article and translated it into Greek. It just proves it's all Greek to me. So, uh, that was my very first foray into solar panels. 1997. 1996. Okay, that's... 25, 29 years ago. It's been a while since I first got into this, and I found it a rewarding hobby. One of the problems with solar power as a hobby is that it just sits there and works. I guess you can add blinking lights, but you don't need to. But the point is that there really is a process that you go through to determine how many solar panels, how many batteries, and so on. You have to know some facts about your area, such as what's called the solar... Now, I know this is a weird word. The solar insulation. Not insulation or insolent. It's solar insulation, which is basically the percentage of the time in your area, on average, that the sun shines. And there's all kinds of maps for this. If you're down in southwestern U.S., uh, we have lots of sunny days. So you start with the load, you work up to the battery size, and then you work up to the number of solar panels to keep that working. There is a process. Now, what most people do is they start with the solar panel, which is actually the last factor in the equation. And, of course, that's what I've always done. I've been put in the solar panel. Uh, I used to have about 400 amp hours of lead-acid batteries over there, which gives me the equivalent of 200 amp hours because you don't want to discharge the batteries below uh, 50%. And I now have under here a 100 amp hour, a beautiful 100 amp hour lithium ion battery. And that's what I am using. I'm going to be getting rid of these other cells here. Because they're very old. They're well past their cell by date. So there you have it. All about solar power. So check out my article in the April 1996. By the way, I won the cover plaque 
for this article that month. Still got that. So, if you'd like to help support this channel, you certainly can. Go to decastlercom support. Or you can go to patreon.com slash ke0og. Find a way that works for you. I sure appreciate your support. I appreciate all your comments and the good vibes that you send my way. And thank you for being so kind to me during this uh, period of time I've been down with COVID. Thank you very much, and until next time, 73.